this is the first crack seat we've been able to get <laughs> since we arrived in Cusco. I think it's plastic here. Sprayed sanitizer all over. Papita Reina. The arched brick wall. Look at this. View of the mountains over here. We're Alex and Lindsay. We're two travelers who are exploring South America. Suddenly, a strict lockdown began in Peru, and we've been stuck ever since. Along the way, we took in a stray dog, and he hasn't left our side. It's been months, and we're still here, so we're documenting the whole experience and sharing it with you. All right, guys, we just left the house, and we have our laundry with us. We haven't done laundry in a month because of the last place. The washing machine, we couldn't use it at the second half because we had neighbors that had COVID. So now we have to go find a landeria. All right, so some of you have asked if we've been treated differently while we're in Peru during COVID. Well, we just noticed an old lady that was on our side of the street. When she saw us coming, she went to the other side of the street. Totally avoided us. So it could be because we're tourists and she's scared that we have COVID. This could have been happening all along and maybe we just never noticed. Yeah, because she wasn't just avoiding people because she went over to the other side where it looked like a local was passing by. <laughs> but it's, it seemed like right when she saw us coming, like, she made a beeline for the other side. So kind of interesting. Yeah. So I guess that stereotype might still be a thing. <laughs> that Yay, we're gonna have clean clothes. All right, so we paid 32 soles, which is about, what, $9? So the very first place we went to, she was trying to charge us seven soles for wash, dry, and cold. But we're friends with some tourists that are stuck here and they said they've been paying four soles. So we went next door. The guy said four soles for wash, dry, and cold. So she was trying to charge us almost twice as much. I think probably just because we're tourists, because literally the place was next door. 10 steps from their place, so. But the weird thing is she knew we were comparing prices with the neighbor, and we said our friends are getting poor soles and she still wouldn't budge. Wow. So we're gonna pick up our clothes tomorrow, and we're excited to have clean clothes after a month. Look at this, there are cars on the road for once. Look at all those cars. For the last two months, this has been completely empty. We're never going to see it like we used to see it where there was literally no one. And we kind of miss it a little bit, <laughs> but well, we wouldn't take this back, so. <laughs> It'll never be like that again, ever, probably. <laughs> All right, now we're going to pick up our laundry at this lavanderia. Last time we came here, there was no one at the front desk, so I literally had to yell, oh. but I don't have to do that today, he's right here. So we just went grocery shopping at Plaza Dea, and this is the first taxi we've been able to get <laughs> since we arrived in Cusco, basically. Uh, they just started this week. And look, I'm not sure if this is how it typically is, but look at this, it's all covered here. <laughs> so there's a sign here that gives you what looks like instructions of what you should be doing. And then this whole thing is plastic here now. And then there's a little area here where you can pay. Take a 
right here is a haunted house. We haven't been in the car in three months. This is so weird. Never thought it would be weird being in an automobile, a train, a bus, anything. But this might be the longest I've ever gone without being in one. What Me too. Yeah, probably throughout my whole life. Yeah. That's weird. All right, guys, so we're getting some delivery tonight. We just ordered from El Templo in Cusco, and they should be here any minute. We're getting some interesting food, so we'll show you that really quick. This isn't going to be really a food video, so we'll, we won't go into too much detail. But pretty soon, we're going to try a bunch of awesome Peruvian traditional foods in one of these next videos. All right, Alex just went to go get our delivery. The delivery is here. Ah, finally. She couldn't <laughs> find us. Look at that. Uh, she sprayed sanitizer all over it, so that's just... <laughs> this is Papita Reina. Ooh, we've been hearing a lot about that one, but we haven't tried it yet. That's uh, maracuya oh. juice. Oh, wow. This is just juice. <laughs> this is a bacon cheeseburger. This is my papas. I'm not sure if this is some kind of dish or if it's just like their creation, but it has fries, some pulled chicken, and then some kind of pork, like hot dog on there. If you guys know what that is, then let us know. And then whenever they deliver you food, <laughs> they bring you ketchup, mayonnaise, sometimes like an ahi sauce and a mustard, and they put them in these little mm. baggies. This is one big burger. And this might be the first time I'm having a juice out of a bucket. <laughs> I guess how else are they going to transport good. it? So this here is the papita rellena. <laughs> That's potato on the outside, pretty sure. Corn. And then beef. corn, maybe a beef, some kind of sauce and spices. I might get hooked on this by the end of this trip. You guys said that the flavor comes from a plant and that it's better if you have it on ice or really super cold. So I put this in the freezer for about two hours and so it should be good to go. Mm, yes, it is better cold. This isn't gonna be a food video, so we're gonna enjoy our food here and we will have some food for you guys soon, <laughs> the right way. Welcome to our new Airbnb. All right, so we just moved into this place. We're super excited. We needed a change of scenery and this place is huge. We are impressed by the size of this place and the quality. So come on into our first living room. So right here is where Mr. Potato Head gets to sleep. We got him two blankets, so he's nice and comfortable. The host was nice enough to let us have him. They normally don't allow pets, but I think just because of quarantine and the unique circumstance, he allowed it, but only in this room. So he sleeps here. We have this huge living room, tons of space on the couch and a huge table so we could play games. It's only the two of us, but this would be the perfect place to have like a whole family or group of friends. Does that Inca Cola come with it? Inca Cola is not included, but it's less than a dollar and you can get one of your own. So this Airbnb has the same host as the last one that we just showed you. So there's some similarities definitely between the two. There's a lot of homey touches, like there's books, games that kind of helps you feel like a home away from home, which is super nice. And it gives you something to do if you're bored during lockdown or not during lockdown, if you're just traveling. So we got a stereo in case we want to jam out. <laughs> It's huge, and one thing that I really like is that even though you're inside, you kind of have an outdoor feel because there's these huge windows that overlook the garden, and it's beautiful. Right okay. in the center of the Cusco city, it's kind of hard to find a lot of greenery, so this is awesome. All right, we'll take you to the kitchen. So you just go down these steps, which are really cool. I've never seen steps quite like this. So when you go down these steps, it takes you to the kitchen area, but in this little corner, it's super cute and cozy. They have this little 
chair, and then up here, there's these really modern, cool-looking lights that are hanging. It gets really cold in Cusco, so they have a nice big fireplace with wood that we can burn right there, so that'll keep us warm. All right, and then this is probably the biggest indoor plant in a house I've ever seen. <laughs> Take a look, you guys. Wow. You, go, you look up and it almost reaches the ceiling of this house, which is saying a lot. We love places that have like little unique touches like this that you wouldn't find anywhere else. And then there's one of the three bathrooms right here. It's re really interesting because the door is cut like that diagonally. One of the coolest doors I've ever seen just because of that top there. It's just an extra little bathroom. We Have probably won't use it too much. The giant kitchen table. This could probably seat about 12 people. So again, probably the biggest table I've ever seen in a house. Next we have a little bar with two little bar stools. And at this place they provide drinking water, which is a huge plus because you can't drink the water in Cusco. And look at the wall, the arched brick wall here. That is a really cool touch. <laughs> And then we're going into the kitchen here. So tons of storage with the cabinets. They provide tea, a blender, everything you would need for cooking, which is perfect for us during lockdown. They provide sugar salt, all these different miscellaneous things, a huge freezer and fridge. A lot of times with these Airbnbs, you'll just get like those little mini fridges, which don't really fit much. And then we have a microwave. Everything, literally every appliance that we have wanted yeah. in all of our Airbnbs. Blender, coffee maker, toaster oven, a dish drying rack, a tea kettle, another tea kettle, a real stove and oven. This is the only Airbnb I think that has had literally everything we could have asked for and we're really grateful. All right, now we're gonna go upstairs and Alex is gonna take over the tour. All right guys, I'm gonna finish the tour with you and actually there are five levels to this house So there's a lot left. So first Lindsay's gonna show you the second bathroom on the third floor It's getting confusing guys <laughs> All right, and now I'm gonna show you really quick the master bedroom All right, this isn't an optical illusion, guys. This is a huge bed. This is the biggest bed that I've ever slept on. And we have a view of this garden down here, a bench, some art, huge closet, so we can actually take all of our stuff out of our bag for once and lay it all in the closet and actually act like we live here. And then the master bathroom. It's not huge, but it's pretty nice. Look at this glass sink. And then we have a see-through glass shower like the last place. All right, let's go to the third floor here. Wait, that's the fourth. <laughs> okay, the fourth floor, jeez. All right, so this is another bedroom that we probably won't use. It's pretty cool, has a lot of space. It has a lot of lighting because these frosted windows here which face another garden, which is really awesome. And then look at the ceiling. All right, let's show you one of the best rooms of the house. This the, is my favorite. The second living room. <laughs> look at this. We have never seen couches or sofas like this. This must be some kind of Peruvian boat shape. We have a bunch of board games. We have Monopoly, Pictionary, Candyland, and then we have a TV, which we haven't used yet but supposedly there might be Netflix on it, which would be very Ooh. nice. And then we have this whole other room attached to it. I'll probably do some work on this little bench desk here. I like these vintage touches here, and <laughs> that's awesome. Vintage stereo. And then another area to sit if you want. And then this seating area actually overlooks the garden. Now let's bring you to the next floor. I don't know what number it is. <laughs> Fourth or fifth? I think it's the last one, number five. Oh, there's another one up there. Oh, so technically I guess there's six. Let's go up yet some more stairs. And we're gonna bring you in. Oh, oh god! What the heck? <laughs> what did you do? What is that? 
<laughs> All right, we're gonna bring you to maybe my actual favorite part, which is our outdoor porch area. Ah, uh, one of the best parts of the house. We can get some sun out here, get some vitamin D. Probably gonna have dinner out here on this thing here. I told Alex, I was like, oh, awesome, I can tan in the nude, and then we're like, oh wait, there's a neighbor. <laughs> so we have a view of the garden down here, and then a nice little view of the mountains over here. You can see Viva El Peru in the mountains. We've never had a really good view of that because we've been further away, but now we do. And then we have two pairs of Peruvian bowls pretty close to us. They're which, protecting. Yeah, I think they're for protection, maybe good luck. See the ones over here? All right, let's show you the rest of the house. We're almost done. All right, last room here, a little loft at the top. So this is what we call the sixth floor. And just this little, tiny <laughs> little room with a cool roof because it goes... It's vaulted, kind of. Yeah, vaulted ceiling that goes into the same shape as the roof. So it makes it feel a lot bigger than it actually is. Hey guys, see so you know that tree I showed you on the first level? This is the top of it. So like I said, it's almost touching the ceiling. It is so high up. If you can show them from up here all the way down. It goes down five or six stories here. So guys, for this entire place, you can rent it for anywhere from $120 US to $200 USD. It just kind of depends on the time of year. We're getting it for a discount, obviously, because of coronavirus. There's not many tourists here and people need to rent these out at least to make just a little bit of money. And Dirk was nice enough to help us out. So, this is the best Airbnb by far I've ever stayed in. Would you agree, Alex? Yep. We have both been really homesick lately, as you guys have been hearing through our videos. So this is exactly what we needed to feel more at home and just have more space and not feel so confined. And since we're going to be here for several weeks, we're going to be making our lockdown videos still every couple days. And we can't wait to show you guys how we're utilizing all this space. We'll show you guys our dinners outside, our breakfasts inside, this tree, <laughs> and everything else so look forward to seeing this place for quite a while what's up guys now it's time for q a all right the first one comes from my mom on the phone last night she asked me how do i find your links that you always mention on your youtube videos so we have links in the description below to Amazon, the GoFundMe for Potato Head, the merch, so Potato Head t-shirts and all that. We have a ton of stuff down there. Travel insurance, Amazon shop, if I didn't say that already. <laughs> uh, and you can get to all those by going to the description. Some people still don't know how to get there, so I'm going to show you right now on the phone really quick and on desktop, depending what you're on, how to find those things. So on desktop, you go to where it shows the description and then it says show more. You click show more and then it opens up a bunch more and that's where you see all of the links to everything. And if you're on your phone, next to the title of the video, you'll see a little arrow to the right. If you click on that arrow, then it'll open up everything and that's where you'll see all the links. Just scroll down below to see everything. So hopefully this helps you and well. Check out some of the links. <laughs> <laughs> Next question comes from Piero Puccinelli. Puccinelli. Sounds Italian. Did you guys think about getting some cute dog jackets for Mr. Potato Head? He could be a bit cold too. Yeah, we have thought about it. Uh, we are going to try to find him something if we can find something big enough for him. Most of the sweaters we've seen are for smaller dogs. Also, we don't really know if he would keep it on and like it. Some dogs don't like to have stuff like that on, so. But if it's cheap enough and we can test it out on him, we will give that a try. That'd we'll, be pretty cute. Yeah, uh, we'll go to the same place that we've been going to, where we got sweaters like this. So hopefully we'll find a really cool, warm Peruvian sweater we could even, or like, poncho for We him. could make him one if we can't find one. We could cut little holes for his legs. <laughs> that could be really cute. Yeah, we might have to do that. Good idea. Next one is from Freddy Cardenas. He says, hello guys, if you talk more about Peruvian food, I'm sure that your channel would have many more followers. We Peruvians are passionate when someone talks about our food. I think we have discovered that, <laughs> especially in our live streams, when you guys are asking us questions, telling us things, I'd say about 
60-70% of everything mm -hmm. you say uh, the Peruvians <laughs> is about your food. So we're gonna hope to do some food tours from home. We're gonna get mm -hmm. some deliveries and stuff. Um, but tell us, is that true? <laughs> is that what you want to see? More so than lockdown stuff, food stuff? Let us know what you'd like to see on this channel and we're gonna see what we can do while we're still here. And if that is what you like to see, you're in luck because pretty soon we're gonna be doing a Peruvian food tour video. We're gonna order a bunch of traditional Peruvian dishes and try them all for you guys. Can't wait for that. <laughs> okay, this next question is from JCSXYZ2005 who said that they watched our older videos during the lockdown when there were absolutely no people around in the streets in the daylight. How often do we go to a tourist area where there are no people and we have the whole city to ourselves? I would say that that very rarely happens and when it does, it's a gift. And usually when it does happen, you have to travel to the touristic places during the off season. So maybe the weather isn't as great so not as many people are there, just the off time of year. That or you get up very early in the morning, <laughs> like 5 or 6 a.m. And then you can sometimes do it at that point. Or you go to the cities and the smaller towns that are not yet so discovered by tourists. And you can sometimes get those places pretty much to yourself. But those are harder and harder to find mm -hmm. every day. So mm -hmm. this is a special experience. And now we don't even see the streets empty anymore. So I think our special time here has kind of come to an end as far as no tourists or no people, I should say. Yeah. All right. The next question is from Eagerman33. Do you think the situation is under control in Cusco? Cheers. <laughs> well, I don't know exactly what you mean by under control, but... Based on my interpretation, I would say Cusco does have it under control. There aren't very many cases, um, and it seems like the city is taking the proper precautions. People are wearing masks, there's little sanitary stations set up, and people for the most part were following lockdown very, very strictly until up until recently, like the last two weeks. So. We feel good about being here. It feels safe. But right now, starting this week, it seems like people are kind of tired of the lockdown, but Cusco is still in a decent place. So now people are out, people are starting to live life again, and I think that the police are allowing them to do that. So I think they do have it under control. They're just seeing what will happen if uh, we start living our regular lives again, in a way. Yeah, so it's nice to see that things are gradually reopening. Hopefully that's a good way to go about it. The next one comes from Simona Chorai. She says, have you decided if you will still be traveling after the lockdown? I know cold season starts soon in South America. 100% yes. If tourist things start opening, we are going to travel after the lockdown in South America. And if we can't, we're still going to travel eventually anyway. <laughs> So we think most likely what's going to happen is after this lockdown ends, hopefully pretty soon, after this month, we'll be able to travel a little bit inside of Peru. So if you have any recommendations, tell us where we should go in Peru, mm -hmm. but most likely we're going to stick to the south, Lake Titicaca and that kind of area under Cusco and around Cusco. Because north in Iquitos and north of Lima, no it's bueno. pretty bad. It's very bad there, so we probably won't be able to go up there. And then possibly if we can get into Bolivia from there or Chile, maybe we'll do one of those and then we'll take a break and go home. And then we'll be traveling again after we visit friends and family. Yes. And we're not just going to be documenting the lockdown experience. We're going to be doing travel vlogs when we go out and travel. All right. The last question here is from Ross B who asks, are there any other tourists that you have met that are still in Cusco? Yes, we've met probably around 10 tourists. Of course, there's more than that. But we've met some people from Australia, the US, where else? Belarus. Yeah. Uh, several from the US, actually. Several from Australia, actually. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah. England. Yeah, so mostly we've met people through our neighbors. Usually in these Airbnbs, you have people that are pretty close to you. And so you just kind of see them walking around. So yeah, we met a few people that way. Um, Which is nice because we're kind of all in this weird situation stuck in Peru. So it's been nice to have a little community like that. All right, guys, once again, if you want some postcards, we got a ton of these. <laughs> I'm going to be drawing on them. We'll be writing something on them for you. If you join the Patreon, 
uh, which is linked down below in the description, then we're gonna send you postcards, not only from Peru, but when we travel around the world for the next year or two or whatever we end up doing, we'll be sending you stuff from around the world. Also, yeah. right now they're not allowing us to send mail, but as soon as we're able, we are gonna send these off. It's just right now with COVID, it's kind of hard. So thank you to all the patrons. And these are all our current patrons. Thank you so much. We're gonna be sending you guys stuff just as soon as we can. You guys are awesome. All right, now we're gonna get into our coronavirus story. If you have a story you would like to share, we would love to hear it and we will feature it on our video. You can submit it through Dropbox. It's also in the link in the description box below and it just needs to be horizontal and 30 seconds to two minutes long. Hey, hello, Alex, Lindsay, Mr. Potato, and all the public that is watching this. <laughs> well, I'm Dred Hale. Yes, I know my number doesn't sound like Peruvian conventional name, but it's a long story, maybe in the next video. <laughs> well, I'm Dred Hale, I'm 22 years old. Um, I'm a tourist guy, um, interpreter. However, I'm unemployed temporarily by the coronavirus situation. Well, yes, uh, this is my passport, Peruvian. <laughs> well, uh, yes, I've been through a lot during this quarantine, especially, uh, specifically for uh, by the coronavirus. Regrettably, uh, the coronavirus triggered me a uh, migraine crisis, uh, migraine episodes, and chronic headache. That's why I've been through a, a strict uh, treatment and a strict diet, etc because I'm a very sensitive person um, by the fact I've been far away of my relatives, my family, especially the Latin people who is really close with the family has been really um, tough and difficult for me. However, I've been in that extra dreaming as I've mentioned before and I'm really better now and I support you, Alex Lindsay. I love your channel and please never stop recording videos <laughs> for me and for the rest of your subscribers. <laughs> well, and I have for you, uh, I hope you're safe. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Please give this video a like down below. It really helps us out. Leave a comment or a question, anything down below. We love hearing from you guys. And subscribe if you haven't already. We'll be showing a lot more of these videos. And we will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao. We have some Potato Head merch. So Mr. Potato Head, we put him on some t-shirts, some mugs and other things. We think it's pretty cool. So all of these have been hand drawn by myself. So check them out, see if you want anything. Let us know what you think or if you have any ideas of things that you would wanna see on there. And the link is in the description below and it's through Teespring. Hey guys, we can only do so much on YouTube and we only put out a video every two or three days. So if you want more, if you want daily stuff, you should head to Instagram, find us at Alexander Travel Bum. And that's where you'll find daily stories and photos about our travels. Hey, thanks for making it all the way through this video. If you want to watch more, click one of these videos. Subscribe because I'm traveling all around the world and I'm sharing the whole thing with you. Thanks.